Activation for brow chakra, third eye area, pineal gland, DMT craziness. Um, I'm only starting out this way because things start out general and not specific. And this was just about clearing, 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 clearing cobwebs and um, weird pathways that we set up in the actual headspace that may not be so great. It may not, because um, it's really easy to, to set up energetic circuits in the body, and it's really easy to do it in the head. That's what meditation is for, you know. When we work with energy, it becomes like an actual thing. Oh, let me just activate this part of my brain, you know, <laughs> or whatever. Um, and I think that sometimes we need to just have that kind of <sighs> soothed and washed away. And uh, Okay, forget all that stuff just open up to this so um, that's what that was about and that was from Metatron so I'm interested to see what else he has to do with the third eye this is going to be a continuing sort of series um, I'll just say the third eye is not the brow chakra the brow chakra is not the pineal gland you know all this stuff is connected and very intimately so it's a relatively small space that we're talking about right um, but as far as the energetic experience goes of having visions of opening up to spiritual awareness, um, that energetic point when perception is allowed to run through it, what I would say, like putting the assemblage point there and opening up to experience that way, 
The point is about truth. Is it? A, it is about activation. It's about accurate perception. So the most accurate perception, which happens to be linked to vision, because that is our, I suppose, most accurate perception, but in a different way. This is difficult to explain. Um, so at that point, for itself, what it is, yeah, that's what it's about. To me, it's about seeing the divine in the physical manifestation of this external reality. And it is an external thing. I mean, it, it obviously, you can use your third eye, I suppose, to go inward. But to me, that's that's an incorrect thing. It's equating your sense of perception and your ability to move your perception anywhere <clears throat> and taking that for granted and saying, oh, this is this magical third eye concept. It's not a third eye that's doing it. You're not learning how to use your third eye in order to put your awareness somewhere else. That's just what you have already. If you couldn't do that, then you wouldn't be able to decide to move your right arm in a systematic fashion. You know, you wouldn't have that ye or intention or strength of will in order to be able to do such a thing. You already have that. You know, you don't need a third eye to do things that are a little weird or wacky or energetic or spiritual. Alright, so the other thing is that the third eye used to be associated and the brow chakra used to be associated with the pituitary gland, not the pineal gland. The pineal gland has a very specific function which relates to dreaming and vision as DMT, the neurotransmitter, relates to dreaming and vision. Because all of those things are slammed up together in people's minds, they assume that the brow chakra is the third eye, is the pineal gland, and it has not always been the case. Um, this is not something that a 2,000 year old yogi would know. They might know that point and have very interesting experiences with it. They might think of it more uh, as an energy or a type of prana or an experience that happens in the body when you reach a certain point in yoga. They might not think of it as an actual physical substance that is created by an actual physical gland within the brain. Um, <clears throat> People know that now, and they think about gland associations with chakras and things, which is, again, not always been the case. Um, and that's a relatively recent thing, and that's what people associate it with. But, again, it used to be the pituitary gland, and a lot of yoga manuals will actually back that up. Look up something, um, <clears throat> which is a great book to do some fascinating, strange research in called The Body of Myth. And it talks about the yoga experience as it was related to the mythological hero's journey. So you take the hero's journey as a metaphor for the yoga experience and re and reaching uh, trance state or samadhi, I guess. Um, and the ultimate end goal is called the pituitary catastrophe. Pituitary catastrophe, meaning the psychic energy or spiritual energy has reached a physical thing, the gland, and a physical reaction occurs. If this physical reaction were to occur before you underwent all of these yogic procedures, at least according to this manual and Raja Yoga thinking in particular, you would probably die because you have not cleared your body of all of these toxins. This is the one weird thing about an activation type gland or a higher chakra that is used in order to clear out lower chakras and things like that. A lot of people start always with the third eye because in meditation and energy work and all of that, not just because it's easy to locate and it is easy to feel energy within the head more than it is e than it is to feel energy other places because the energy is light and moves around a lot related to mentation and all of that. Um, um, yeah, I think I lost my point. <laughs> so... Um, because a lot of traditions start with this point, um, or a lot of traditions do start with this point because it has the effect of clearing out other things below it. And so it's good to start with that. And yet this is also a danger, when you, especially when you're doing really, really powerful work like that. Um, to start with this thing, then you can start to clear out things that might not be ready to be cleared out so quickly, you know? So that was the thing to consider, at least with that. And again, it was not, at least in this manual of yoga that I was reading, it was not the pineal gland that was doing this cascade failure catastrophe 
now everything changes within the human system. You better be clean before it does, kind of thing. Um, it was a pituitary, not the pineal gland that they were talking about. And so there's a lot of debate. Everything up here is, again, a very small space, and it's all more connected than you think it is. Um, so I'm going to continue doing um, some videos with uh, this music. Again, if you would like to purchase the tracks, <coughs> then go to whitesagealchemy.com, um, and you can purchase the music that I'm making with crystal bowls and different things. I've got some new instruments that I'm going to show off to you guys. And I'm going to continue doing this series about uh, third eye brow chakra stuff. I will talk less and I will just do activations and talk about the activations and the energy and the being that's giving the activation and their energy and their type of consciousness and that type of stuff and so on. The next, uh, some of the people that are going to be, or people, <laughs> people, whatever. So. Christ, Krishna, maybe Merlin. Anyway, a lot of people will show up for this type of stuff to give us blessings and activations for the space and the third eye experience. I'm calling it that because I feel like it's more when energy is running through the circuitry in a proper way, it's like vroom, like the intersection of these energies and the perception that they afford you is perceived through this lens as a sort of like video screen in your imagination. It's, it is your mind's eye. It is connected with your mind's, mind's eye. It's the same thing. It is. It's just that there's not a lot of energy running through it and it's not focused in a way. When it's focused in the right way, then we can see interesting things. But again, don't expect fireworks, magical visions. Don't expect to suddenly poof, everything's open and you can see auras and energy everywhere and angels and spirits and whatever. It's not how it works. Not usually. <laughs> okay. And this one experience with this guy, but he obviously had incredible karma because he's a guru now. Um, and his experience early on, he was a youth, and this he went to see this yogi guru person, and he did like a diksha thing, and, and his third eye was blasted open, and he could suddenly see all around him in all directions, and that like he maintained this through the rest of his life. He can see all around him, and I'm like, well, that's the experience I want, <laughs> you know, with the third eye business or whatever. Like, I've never experienced that. That's some intense stuff, you know, and so that's what people are looking for. So with this like light stuff, you know, concentrate here, bring this energy in. Yeah, you can have an incredible visionary experience, like, but that takes a lot to get there. You know, it takes a lot of work to get there. And so there is that. That's not what people mean when they say, this will open up your third eye. It's not going to just happen all at once. That's basically... All I'm trying to emphasize to people, it is a it is a thing with stages and levels and different experiences and all of that. So we'll treat it as such. And I'm going to do another one, and the next video um, will be a being who is also centered around in some way or another third eye, brow chakra space energy experience.